I love this series with my whole heart. I wrote the highs and lows of this book during the lowest point in my life. I chose this piece because I usually choose serious pieces, but this one is more comical. This excerpt always makes me chuckle. This is an excerpt from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. And there's a picture, Weasley, said Malfoy, flipping the paper over and holding it up. A picture of your parents outside the house, if you can call it a house. Your mother could do with losing a little bit of weight, couldn't she? Ron was shaking with fury. Everyone was staring at him. Get stuff, Malfoy, said Harry. Come on, Ron. Oh, yeah? You were staying with them then, this summer then, weren't you, Potter? sneered Malfoy. So tell me, is his mother really that porky or is it just the picture? You know your mother, Malfoy, said Harry. Both he and Hermione had grabbed the back of Ron's ropes to stop himself launching at Malfoy. That expression she's got. Like she's got dung under her nose. Has she always looked like that? Or was it just because you were with her? Malfoy's pale face suddenly went pink. Don't you dare insult my mother, Potter. Keep your fat mouth shut then, said Harry, turning away. Bang! Several people screamed. Harry felt something white hot graze the side of his face. He plunged his hand into his robes for his wand, but before he even touched it, he heard a second loud bang and a roar which echoed through the entrance hall. Oh no, you don't, laddie! Harry spun around. Professor Moody was limping down the marble staircase. His wand was out and was pointing right at a pure white ferret, which was shivering on the stone flagged floor exactly where Malfoy had been standing. There was a terrified silence in the entrance hall. Nobody but Moody was moving a muscle. Moody turned to look at Harry, at least. His normal eye was looking at Harry. The other one was pointed right in the back of his head. Did he get you? Moody growled. His voice was low and gravelly. No, said Harry. Missed. Leave it, Moody shouted. Leave what? Harry said, bewildered. Not you, him. Moody growled, jerking his thumb over his shoulder at Crab, who had just frozen, about to pick up the white ferret. It seemed that Moody's rolling eye was magical and could see out the back of his head. Moody started to lip towards Crab, Goyle, and the ferret, which gave a terrified squeak and took off, shrieking towards the dungeons. I don't think so, roared Moody, pointing his wand at the ferret again. It flew ten feet into the air with a smack to the floor and then bounced upwards once more. I don't like when people who attack their opponents behind their back, growled Moody, as the ferret bounced higher and higher, squealing in pain. Stinking, cowardly, scummy thing to do. The ferret flew through the air, its tail and legs flailing helplessly. Never do that again, said Moody, speaking each word as the ferret hit the stone floor and bounced upwards again. Professor Moody! said a shocked voice. Professor McGonagall was coming down the marble staircase with her arms full of books. And I, Professor McGonagall, said Moody calmly, bouncing the ferret still higher. What? What are you doing? said Professor McGonagall, her eyes following the bouncing ferret's progress through the air. Teaching, said Moody. Teach? Moody, is that a student? said Professor McGonagall, the book spilling out of her arms. Yep, said Moody. No, cried Professor McGonagall, running down the stairs and pulling out her wand. A moment later, with a snapping noise, Dra Draco Malfoy had reappeared, lying in a heap on the floor with his sleek blonde hair all over his now brilliantly pink face. He got to his feet wincing. Moody, we never use transfiguration as a punishment, said Professor McGonagall weakly. Surely Professor D Dumbledore told you that. He might have mentioned it, yeah, said Moody, scratching his chin unconcernedly. But I thought a good shock shock. We give detentions, Moody. Or speak to the offender's head of house. I'll do that then, said Moody, staring at Malfoy with great dislike. Malfoy, whose pale eyes were still watering with pain and humiliation, looked malevolently up at Moody and muttered something in which the words, my father, were distinguishable. Oh yeah, said Moody quietly, limping forward a few steps with the dull clunk of his wooden leg echoing around the hall. Well, I know your father of old, boy. You tell him Moody's keeping a close eye on his son. You tell him that from me. Now, your head of house will be Snake, will it? Yes, said Malfoy resentfully. 
Another old friend, growled Moody. I've been looking forward to a chat with old Snape. Come on, you. As he seized Malfoy's upper arm and marched him off towards the dungeons. Thank you.